As you can probably hear, we are at Circuit of the Americas for the World Endurance Championship race here August 31st and uh, September, September 1st. It's currently Saturday right now. We just got to the track and right now we got some uh, a practice going on with some of the cars. I'm really excited to check out what's here and uh, let's get right into it. We've only been here for like five minutes and it's already insane. They're doing a practice right now, I think, for the Super Trofeo races. Um, I'm not entirely sure if it's a practice or a qualifying, but we're gonna go to the infield and see if we can get a better view. So we've got some cars from the manufacturer on the infield. We got a Supra, a Taycan, which is an interesting choice from Porsche considering, uh, you know, this is an electric race. BMW M4, Mustang, Ferrari Roma is another interesting choice. And then the Cadillac V, which this thing, this thing is actually super underrated. It's a Blackwing too. I actually love these things. These things are super cool. Supercharged V8. My dad likes the Roma. He's all over the Roma. It's 400,000. Oh yeah. It, you could buy probably two of those race cars for the price of this car. We still kind of just got here, so we're just looking around, seeing what's going on. Um, I know a bunch of my friends are here, so I'm also kind of hunting for them. Also, if you haven't noticed, I'm filming on a different camera. I'm filming on a pocket today. I didn't want to bring my whole camera vlog set up, so this is a bit of a test to see how this video turns out. If it turns out really well, we'll keep using this camera for stuff like this. If not, I'll switch back to my big camera. Got some some of the Lamborghini Super Trofeo cars here. You just kind of walk right in here. This is crazy. I don't. I think we can just walk right in. I, no one's yelling at me. Look at that. This is so cool. Look at the livery on that. That's crazy. It's got a big wing. It's on air jacks. This is wild. Got two more over here. Look how cool these things are, man. These things are awesome. Oh, wow, look at the arrow on the back of this thing. Look how crazy the arrow and the carbon is. I mean, I, there's no way this camera does it justice. This is, the brakes are huge and the ducting, the air and everything, like this is super cool. Found my car. Yeah, I think, uh, like in the chicken has a horn. <laughs> a lot of this is just gonna be looking at these Super Trofeos. Is look how cool this is. Look at all the carbon and the... Okay. <laughs> okay. So one thing I can't believe is how many of these things are there. We passed by like, I don't know, maybe seven paddocks by now. And there are so many of these Lamborghini race cars. And there's like four in each little paddock. And they're all different, but the same at the same time. So it's really cool being able to see all of this. We've got plenty behind me. The camera's face tracking me, but look at all that back there. This is pretty cool already, and we haven't even seen any races yet. So I found the rarest of all Lamborghinis, the Trump Lamborghini. Check this thing out, this is so cool. Crazy. 
bankruptcy. So a lot of the hypercars just went round um, and now they're kind of going into the pit uh, and we're going to check out the racing sim setup that they have here. Thrustmaster's got a really cool race set sim setup that you can try stuff out on. It's a little warm today but the nice thing is there's not a lot of people here. It's nice, super chill. Those hypercars sound absolutely insane. The Cadillac is probably my favorite because it's just got this big V8 and it's super throaty. It sounds insane. There are some pretty cool, pretty cool cars here and I am, it's totally worth the price of mission. Arguably, I also went to the Formula One race here. Arguably, this is better than Formula One. So anyway, we're gonna keep checking stuff out here. There's more uh, cars and, and more races going on, but for now, we're gonna try out these race sims and uh, see if I can set a good time. I just got off the sim. I ran a 207 around Coda in the Porsche 9, uh, 963. Uh, hypercar first and then in the second lap I did I ran a 201 flat and then I was gonna beat that time I was 100% sure I was running a great lap and then right as I was about to get to the last corner the sim cut off on me you only got eight minutes so um, anyway I'm happy with that I wasn't trying to prove anything okay maybe I was a little bit but like it's okay um, it seems like there's a few more people now, or at least people walking around as cars are kind of dispersing from the track. So far, this has been a super cool experience, and if you have the opportunity to next time, definitely make it out of Dakota for this event because this is so cool. So here's the Cadillac. I couldn't really talk while we were around the uh, Porsche because there was music playing, but there's no music over here, and this thing looks incredible. I mean, it's so low to the ground. There's carbon everywhere. The livery on this is incredible too. I mean, this is probably my favorite sounding car that is here just because the V8 in this is just incredible. But I mean, the, the look of this thing, you know, I always thought who would buy a car just because of how a race team was doing. But after hearing the Cadillac and seeing it, I, I wasn't a huge fan of Cadillac before, but now I am. This thing is just, I mean, look at the massive vents for the turbulent air. Uh, the, the lines and everything along the side of the car. This is just, I, this is a masterpiece. What just started. just started is the Mustang Ford race. I don't know the official term for it, but basically we're just kind of walking ar around to the main grandstands. We're kind of trying to find different angles and what the best place to sit is. Um, there, there's so many great options just in general admission. Um, it, I honestly don't think it's worth paying for the grandstands because then you're kind of locked there. You can't really move around. Like you can move around, but you're just moving around from general admission to general admission. So the best thing to do is just bring like a lawn chair, set up and watch the race from wherever you want. The Mustangs are really cool, I'll admit, but the hyper cars, it's hard. There's just no beating those. Literally, they're so cool, the hybrids with the V8s. Again, I'm gonna say it, even though it's 
maybe slightly controversial. This is better than the Formula One race. There's not as many people here. There's more diversity in the cars. You get Super Trofeo, you get the Mustangs, you get the Hyper cars, you get the Cup cars. You get everything under the sun except Formula One cars. So a lot less people, a cheaper ticket. This is the race to come to, to be honest. So far, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Let's see what else we can find. So we're just able to sit kind of wherever. We're gonna go check out the main grandstands here though. Let's see if we can get a, another angle. So there are probably 40 cars in this Lamborghini race that's about to take place. The Mustang race went on, but just they were mainly just crashing the whole time. So this should be more interesting. These things are very loud. Okay, so the Lamborghinis are probably my favorite. Uh, they sound incredible with the naturally aspirated V10. And I think they look really cool with the Super Trofeo kit. There's also like 50 of them, so... Uh, I don't know how many laps it is. How many, how many laps is this? Time. Time? Okay, 50 minutes? Okay. Alright, cool. Yeah, right, there's a, there's a cheap one we can get. <laughs> okay, so I moved closer to the track. I'm gonna try to get some closer footage of these cars. I'm pretty close right now. Right now it's still a safety car. We're still waiting for the cars kind of to come by again. I'll get some with the safety car, but they're not gonna be hauling by me. Um, when the safety car goes in, is when I'll try to get more. But basically what happened is one of the green Lamborghinis um, there's like 50, 40 or 50 Lamborghinis. One of them um, went to the wall. He was going through the chicane at Coda, um, which I've done a few times in my sim. And that is an easy place to get unsettled if you don't do it right. So I'm not surprised, especially because they're running three wide through most of this track. But I love Coda. They just repaved it. I wish I could be driving it right now, but it is really cool to get to watch and see kind of how these guys perform and kind of what they do. That is what 
of the best. I can't hear out of my right ear right now. I was looking that way. I can't hear out of my right ear. I should have probably brought earplugs, but hey, this is still pretty cool. <laughs> Okay, so that's the end of day one. Um, that was one of the coolest things I've ever experienced in my life. Um, we saw like 50 Lamborghinis running at one time. We saw the Cadillac, and I now found out that it's not Citroen, it's Peugeot was the other hypercar that I like the sound of. Um, the BMWs were okay. The Porsche 963 was really cool but we're gonna come back tomorrow and see the actual endurance race, which is a six hour race of those hypercars. Roman Grosjean is driving, Nick DeVries and Mick Schumacher, are all ex-Formula One drivers. And so it'll be really cool to see them along with all the other drivers driving as well. We also saw the Ford Mustang race today. The reason why I didn't really mention that off the bat is because it, it was a Ford Mustang race. It's kind of a, it was cool, but it wasn't as cool as some of the other stuff. A lot of them just crashed. So, but the Lamborghinis was probably the highlight of the day. What, what, what was your favorite part, Dan? I like the Lamborghinis. Uh, never seen anything like that, that many Lamborghinis in one place. Also, uh, the hypercars were really pretty impressive. Yeah, those, those V8s were something else. It was, oh man, hearing the sound of Cadillac now has seriously impressed me recently with their Blackwing, the the hypercar that they've built. So I'm really excited to see more of this tomorrow. For now though, we're taking the Porsche out to dinner. I don't know where we're going yet, but the Porsche looks pretty cool in this field actually. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you guys tomorrow and we'll kind of see how it all goes. It's day two here at Coda for the World Endurance Championship race. Today is the actual race. It's gonna be a six hour race and it starts at around 1 p.m. Right now it is 10 o'clock on the dot. Um, there's a couple of races in the meantime. There's a Lamborghini Super Trofeo race going on right now. There's a Ford Mustang race this morning that we missed. Um, but I wanted to kind of look around a little bit more and kind of see what else is here. We're kind of making our way to the main grandstands right now. We're walking by the Cadillac hypercar display over here again that we saw yesterday. As you can see, there's that Cadillac hypercar. We got the Ford stand over there. It'll be fun to actually get to see them run today. I know a few of my friends are down here today getting some cool video as well. So we're gonna try to meet up with them and uh, hopefully it should be a pretty good day and uh, a lot of good races as well. An end piece of that wing just flew off. This is so. This is the last couple corners of Coda here, and it's a uh, it's a pretty intense uh, place to pass because you've got a really high speed sweeping turn over there, and you're coming in. Then this is like a first second gear corner right here into the final turn. Oh, he's going in the pit. So yeah, if you don't do that corner right. You're coming really high speed through this last corner into this turn right here, which is like a first, second, you know, corner. If you don't do it right, you're going off. If you, basically, if you underbrake, you're going off. If you overbrake, there's a risk that you kind of get thrown into the wall on the inside because it will unsettle the car, especially if you eat the curb on the inside. So it's really cool to see these guys. This is where a lot of people try to pass, but really it sets you up. If you do this corner right and the other guy that you're with does it wrong, it sets you up to pass on that corner. You can do kind of a switchback maneuver into that corner there. I can hear him coming again around the inside, but basically it's a long sweeping corner right there. This is really high speed, fifth, sixth gear all the way around. You're gonna come in, kind of dive through here, downshift, first second so he's gonna come out here downshift eat that curb there all the way out to the outside
There's one car that I know is gonna do a pass here. Watch this gold car here. He's gonna come in, set himself up, go on the outside, do a pass there. That guy went into the pit, but otherwise he would have passed on the inside of that second corner. So we decided to go up the tower because it's only like 10 bucks. And we kind of wanted to see the view of the whole track. I figured we're not gonna make it to the other side of the track before the race ends to watch it from the grandstands. So we're gonna go up the tower. Here come some of the cars though. This is this long sweeping turn I was telling you about earlier. That's first place right there. All right, so we're up here at the top of the tower now. It's a little windy. I'm here with Gotham from Cars and Questions. They came and toured the garage about a, what was it, a couple weeks ago? Yeah. We probably have the video on our YouTube channel before. Yeah, this is, yeah, so. Man, it's loud up here. I didn't know it's loud. It's so much fun. This is so much better than F1, I can tell you that. Oh, uh, that's what I've been saying the whole weekend, is this is a better yeah. experience than F1. So, did you see how much tickets were to come up here? Yeah, like 10 bucks. Yeah. Do you know how much they are at F1? No. 50 bucks. To come up the town. $50 to come up here. I mean, the general admission was so much cheaper. I don't, there's so much space behind us, it was perfect. Yeah, in, in Formula One, you'd only stay up here for like eight minutes. Yeah. Here, they're like, you can stand there for 25 there's minutes. There's usually a line. This is great though, I love this. Okay, so we're back down from the tower. It was nice to see Gotham and Nick from Cars and Questions. I'll go ahead and link their channel down below. I don't know if they're making a video of the event, but they've got a kind of a cool new YouTube channel that they're making some cool content on. Um, but as you can hear, the track has fallen quiet. It's kind of a nice little intermission for lunch and stuff um, after the Super Trofeo race until the uh, endurance race which starts at I believe 1 p.m. and goes all the way to like 7 it's a six-hour race I think they even switch drivers but that I'm gonna be doing most of the filming of that we'll kind of look around see what else we can find here but we did kind of most of the fun stuff yesterday so we might just cut to the race here or I might show you guys around a bit more definitely though if you guys are looking into getting into watching racing this is an affordable race to go to and it's arguably more fun than F1. F1 is definitely an event, it's a spectacle, but it's so crazy and so expensive. This is super chill, not as many people. You can definitely experience it way more uh, close than Formula One. Anyway, let's walk around and see what we can find. So this is the gold car that was driving really aggressive. Basically, he started pretty far back and he would just dive bomb corners all the way up to the front. Uh, yesterday, he started 30th, I think, and he finished P7. So I'm impressed with this driver and this team. These guys are uh, a serious, serious team. So this car reminds me of the uh, one in Gran Turismo. The, I don't know, have you seen Gran Turismo? Uh, not lately. With the, one of the teams is a, uh, a gold Lamborghini and he's like oh. the, the bad guy. 
this was a super cool car to watch. I'm really glad we got to see this. So one of the cool things about these Lamborghini Super Trofeo races is we can just kind of walk around the paddocks and they can't stop us. Um, or they don't want to stop us, but tuning. We got the legendary Milwaukee find with the Lamborghini single lug nut. I told you guys, Milwaukee's the best. Even Lamborghini uses them. You think if I took that in plate, they would miss it? Okay, so right now it's about 12 o'clock. The main race actually starts in about an hour. I'm walking up the turn one right now. I want to try to get some shots of these cars going around. I think they're kind of doing a practice, getting the cars all tuned. You can hear them going around. So I want to try to get some shots of these things from turn one because I didn't get any yesterday. I only got the Fords going around turn one. And then hopefully I can make it back in time to the main grandstand for the start of the race. So that's kind of the plan. We're heading to turn one and uh, seeing what we can get. So I got a little bit of the cars uh, coming out of the pits in at turn one, um, but I was a little late. A lot of them are now just lined up on the grid. They're starting to get ready for the race, so I'm heading back to the grandstands. Luckily, it's not far of a walk. Let's see if we can get a good seat so we can watch the whole race. So far, again, this has been totally worth it, and I am definitely doing this again next time they do it. If you guys haven't watched an endurance race other than Le Mans, I think it's definitely worth it. I I haven't really given enough credit to the series and the Super Trofeo series. Um, after today, I'm going to look a little more into it and see, kind of, maybe follow it a little heavier than I usually do. Usually, I just follow Formula One, maybe IndyCar a little bit, but um, this is definitely a very interesting series to follow. It's a lot more dynamic than Formula One. Formula One, it's typically one or two guys winning most of the time, one or two teams. This. It's kind of all over the board and it's a little less regulated with rules, so it's a little crazier. You get a little bit more action, I would say. So I definitely think it's worth looking more into. Anyways, I'll see you guys at the start of the race, hopefully with a really good seat in the grandstand. I've never seen this. We are going to have two very special guests. Yeah. As you can see, I'm wearing a different t-shirt now. There was a t-shirt cannon and they shot me with a shirt. So I decided to put it on, see how it fits. And it fits pretty well. So I'm gonna wear the WEC shirt for the rest of the race. And uh, it should be starting here soon, about 12.30. So about 30 minutes from now, I'll check in with you guys. sounds the best out of the out of the touring cars the uh the Le Mans cars the the the, super, the hyper cars I like the um Cadillac and the Peugeot those are probably my two favorites They're, they all got big V8s in them so they sound amazing the Lamborghini also sounds pretty cool it's got that V10 but man there's something about those straight pipe V8s all right so they're coming around the last couple corners here here they go along the straight Okay, so for 
Ryan right now is in the lead. It was, uh, it's the first lap. Um, I'm going for Cadillac, obviously. Um, but going for long. We're looking pretty good here. Here it comes, here it comes. Ferrari. So uh, after the first lap, one car is already into the pits. I'm, uh, I don't know if it's a free show. I think it's one of the first shows, got hit, um, got some damage, and they've come into the pits, and now they're going back out. And then the Lamborghini has moved up from last place to second to last place. Cadillac was not in fourth. I think they're in like sixth or seventh. They're not doing great. We got Ferraris running up at the front, the BMWs, shortly after that, I think, and then we got the Cadillac. Um, the Cadillac sounds incredible as it buzzes by. It is the loudest of all the cars, and arguably the best sounding. We'll kind of see how this goes. We got six hours ahead of us and see who comes out ahead. Okay, so I met up with Austin down here at Coda. We're heading up to turn one. It's been about four or five laps now. We wanted to kind of get some other shots. There's no real overtaking on that main straight, but there are some dive bombs down in the turn one. So I figured we'd start there, see if we can get some overtakes. And uh, if not, then we'll kind of just work our way around the track. right now I've been getting some awesome shots of them coming down the hill on turn one uh, and I'm heading up to turn two right now on the bridge to kind of see what else I can get. We, so far this is an amazing race. I love the endurance series. The hypercars just sounding all the cars sound incredible but especially the hypercars and the cool thing is that since this is more of a local race it's about three hours away from me I'm seeing a bunch of people I know, which is super cool. Like Austin, another Austin, um, Gotham and Nick. So far it's been an awesome day. Not only seeing the cars, but seeing all the people too. of the supercars they're coming into the pit but the hypercars have not come in yet so I'm wondering if the hypercars are gonna come in this lap or if they're waiting to see if it's a full safety car the Cadillac definitely sounds the coolest there is a pink Lamborghini by an all-women team. It's called the Iron Maidens, which is kind of cool. And they're doing a driver change right now. So one of the things, if you notice, that the pit stops are nowhere near as fast as like Formula One for sure, probably even slower than NASCAR. they do that driver change they change the tires and I think they also add fuel here's the Ferrari that wrecked it just came into the pit notice the Ferrari right there it's going real slow in the pit here comes the Ferrari team they're running Ferrari team's running all the way down to the hypercar. It looks like that Ferrari is out of the race, but who knows, they might get it started, but if they're pushing it like that to me, they're, they're done. Now that it's cooled off a little bit, I wanna to try to get some overtakes up there. Uh, now that the cars are dispersed, 
Um, also, one of my buddies is heading up there. He's he said I should meet him up there, so I'm gonna head up that way, see what I can do, and then uh, keep going from there. I think I heard Porsche get stalled. And it's sitting at the end of the pit lane entrance. This might cause a yellow at least, maybe even a safety car, depending on if they can move it or not. Yeah, there's the yellow, we got the yellow flag. We might get a safety car. So we brought these headphones and I successfully tuned in to the Cadillac team. So right now I'm listening to their onboard. Uh, I think I can also get into Ferrari and BMW. But right now, I'm kind of just listening to Cadillac. Cadillac's doing okay. Um, I don't know their exact standing right now. But... Oh, something's happened. It's like a virtual safety car. Oh, there's something in the track. They're trying to get rid of it, so all the cars have slowed down. It's so strange listening to the Cadillac through the headphones and then watching it slowly go by. That's such a cool, such a cool feeling. So, anyway, right now we've got a bit of a safety car. I might head back to the main grandstands just because it is so chill right now. I've got a little bit of footage of people kind of overtaking here, um, but I'm probably going to go back to the shaded area where it's not so crazy. Currently, Ferrari is in first place. Cadillac is in second, but just came into pit. Ferrari's been battling with Nick DeVries in Toyota. Nick DeVries has a seriously good chance of winning this race if he can just keep up with the Ferrari. Cadillac is in the pit right now. They were running in second, but he was undercut by Nick DeVries in the Toyota. And then Ferrari sent in their fourth place car to the pit stop. And I think they just put their first place car in the pit. It's 5.05. And currently all the hypercars are coming in for a pit. Oh, one of the hypercars is off. Oh, it's the Peugeot. That's Nick. So the Toyota that just went by is Nick DeVries. He's sitting in second right behind the BMW, but the BMW has not pit yet. So Nick is currently in first place in the Toyota. Peugeot has gone off the track, causing an FCY. Basically a yellow flag that slows everybody down to safety car conditions. I've been watching the race on the phone to kind of keep up with the standings in the, in the real time. It looks like they changed Nick DeVries out of the car. I was kind of wrong. It's not Nick DeVries in the car anymore because they just came into pit, so they switched out drivers. I do not know who's behind the wheel right now, but they are sitting first place in Toyota. Peugeot looks like it's probably out of the race at the S's. Cadillac's in sixth right now, but that's only because a few people haven't hit it. I think they're going to come back out into fourth. Um, behind the Ferraris. I would really like it if they could pass at least one of the Ferraris and we have Cadillac in third place. That'd be awesome, but I don't know if we'll get that. Porsche Penske, a lot of the Porsche teams aren't doing as well as I'd hoped either. I do love Porsche, but they are just not competing well enough. Porsche's running consistently behind the LP. There's one Lamborghini on the grid. They're actually doing pretty well. They're running in the midfield. They're about seventh place right now. I'm kind of surprised at how well they're doing. Um, here comes Cadillac. The sound of the Cadillac is the coolest one, hands down. But basically, we're just waiting for them to clear the Peugeot. I'm guessing this might trigger a couple of pit stops. Um, it's kind of unfortunate to the hypercars that have pitted. But actually, I don't know if they're allowed to pit during these conditions. Not sure on that. I think they have to hold their position. Unlike Formula One, where everybody gets moved back up for an FCY and endurance races, basically you just hold your position in the exact time to the people in front of you. Every Two cars have come into the pit. Peugeot, maybe? Yeah, the Peugeot has come into the pit. A 
bunch of hyper cars are now starting to come in. They're starting to bleed off from that undercut in Toyota. I think we've got an hour or two hours left in the race. I'll kind of check back in in probably an hour and see kind of where we're sitting standing on. Overall, pretty great race. That yellow Ferrari is in second place right now. The gap to third place is crazy. Toyota is running at one, Ferrari two, Ferrari three, and then Cadillac four. The gap between second and third though is quite a bit. It's quite a large gap. Um, there's only about an hour left. There's still a lot that can happen. The issue is they're stretching their fuel to make it in the last little bit. They don't want to pit again. However, some might be forced to pit, especially like the Cadillac with a big V8. I think he's actually been moving back because of that. He's maintained the same gap to the Ferrari in front of him in third place, but he hasn't been attacking. I think it's because of fuel. We'll see kind of how everything ends up. I'll check back in an hour, right around when the race is ending. That's second place. So the second place just pinned. undercut for third place basically they're trying to beat the Ferrari back out so when the Ferrari comes in and pits they'll have clear in front of them. so basically the Cadillac's trying to undercut the Ferrari and trying to get up into third place for the last stint we'll see if the Cadillac can undercut I'm hoping that they can but it is a pretty far gap between them and third See if the undercut pays off when Ferrari comes in and pits, which is probably this lap. They're in, you know, that's the Singer portion. They're probably going to be coming in here soon. And if Cadillac has a clean track in front of him, which I think he does, he'll be able to successfully undercut. I'm really hoping Cadillac can pull it through third, but we'll see. That's Alpine coming in. There's Ferrari coming in. Now, if Cadillac can successfully get past them on their successfully under there's number two it looks like that ferrari is just now getting its wheels changed let's see okay ferrari's back out cadillac still hasn't come up yet so not only did the cadillac not under but now they're farther away from the ferrari that was out in front so that did not work at all for cadillac now maybe they can pull up some time with some slightly warmer tires but it's looking like Cadillac's coming in fourth today. I'm hoping for third, but the gap in between Cadillac and Ferrari is like four or five seconds, I think, by the screen and my little timer. I don't know. But it's not good. There is about an hour left, but with how neck and neck these cars are, I don't, I don't know. So the Toyota that was running in first place got penalized with a drive through penalty. That held him up about nine seconds, so now he's running in second place behind the Ferrari. He's closing the gap to the Ferrari slowly, um, but he's still in front of the other Ferrari and the Cadillac. Okay, so there's less than 15 minutes left in the race. Cadillac's probably going to end up in fourth. It'll be almost impossible for a Cadillac up for Ferrari to move up, for Toyota move, to move up in front of the lead Ferrari. It's pretty spread out, but as they come back around, I'll okay. Toyota has gained quite a bit of ground to the Ferrari in front.
Toyota is actually gaining quite a bit. To reduce the gap to just about two or three seconds. Which that. We've got nine seconds to make it through. So just like that, the race is over, Ferrari won. It was a very narrow win. It was about three seconds, I think, there at the end between them and Toyota. And the only reason why it was so much was because Toyota got a penalty and then on the last lap, they got a little squirrely in one of the turns. Otherwise, I think Toyota would have had it. Cadillac fell back more than I would have wanted. They still did a great job. They finished fourth. And the way that that Cadillac sounded, it's just such a great, just amazing sound that that car produced so overall i'd say it was a pretty dang good race and uh, uh this is probably one of my most favorite experiences ever so they've opened up the track we're going down onto the track and into the pit to see the cars the drivers and everything like that so i was going to end the video but instead this is pretty cool so if you can see behind me all the cars over there Look at that. Everybody's going to podium right now, which is right up here. I can't believe I'm actually walking on Coda right now. I guess technically if I find someone, I could race on Coda. It'd be a foot race, but technically I could race. Check this out. There's so many people, but this is so cool. There's one of the hypercars taking apart right there. Look at that thing in the air. That's so cool. Check that out. Anyway, we're walking around the track of Coda. Um, it'd be really cool to eventually drive around the track of Coda. But what's really cool is all over the ground are these like melted chunks of tire. And they're actually like, you could tell they melted off. They didn't just like chip off it's like melted chunks so we're walking around the track right now well you can see the pits behind me on this side and the grandstands on that side and this is one of the coolest experiences of my entire life okay so a few awesome things just happened one, they gave me a recovery vest. This is the actual official vest that they wear to go out onto the track as a recovery person. So I just got a recovery vest. And then I went behind the pits and saw all of the cars as they're being put away, as the teams are being put away. Um, put, I saw, got to see some of the drivers um, being interviewed. And then I also met Larry Chin. Um, he did not want to meet me. <laughs> I walked up and I was like, are you Larry Chin? And um, he was like, yes, I am. And I could tell he was so tired and wanted to go home. And I had no idea what to say. And I told him about my Datsun and some stuff like that. And he was like, here, here are some stickers. And I assumed that was kind of a, I'm tired, please go away. 
but I'm so psyched that I got to see him, some of his work and some of the stuff that he's done with Dotsons and Z's. And it was, it was like, he's a huge inspiration to me for photography and then just Dotsons in general. You can tell I'm just like, my mind is so, I haven't felt like this probably any point in my life. He's just a huge inspiration. I'm so thankful I got to meet him. And he gave me some cool stickers, even if they were to kind of just get rid of me. Um, but hopefully when the Datsun is done and it is fully built, he'd be willing to come check it out. I'm hoping it's up to that quality and up to par with that because that would be even a cooler moment. So I hope I didn't ruin my chance there, but we'll see. Holy crap. Today just keeps getting better and better. I don't even know how to react to all this information going on right now. I was gonna go in the video in front of the Porsche 963 race car, but I don't know, man. This has just been one of the coolest experiences of my life. I'm so glad I came. It was a last minute decision. And if you ever get the chance to come to an endurance race, do it. Without a doubt, do it. It's not a killer amount of money, and this was one of the coolest things I've ever done. I'm ending in here in front of the 963. This video has been amazing. This day has been amazing. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.